Hey guys, what's up? It's JR Cuber, and in this video, we have another Puzzle Crate unboxing. This is the November box, so let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. All right, we got two puzzles in here again. Looks like two Calvin's puzzles. All right, so in here we have the Troy 3D Star and the Fisher Wall Cube 1. So let's go ahead and start with this one. So it says, this is a fairly simple and easy puzzle modification. It's a Fisher Cube rotated 45 degrees on its top and bottom layers with a normal three by three in the middle. This makes it so you have to rotate the middle layer 45 degrees before you can scramble the puzzle. The puzzle is of very high quality like most Calvin's puzzles and it can be turned with surprising speed. It's a great puzzle to help solvers learn how to look at pieces in a different way as the puzzle shapeshifts. Happy solving. All right, so a real simple 3x3 shape mod. Definitely gonna be an easy one for this puzzle crate. This just looks like basically an inverse cutter cube. So a cutter cube is a 3x3 modification where you basically just do a Fisher mod to the middle layer and not the top and bottom. So this is the opposite of that. We have a Fisher modification to the top and bottom layers and a normal middle layer. So basically what that means is the top and bottom layers are a Fisher cube, which is just a three by three that's kind of been rotated on its axis along one axis by 45 degrees. Um, and then they've replaced the middle layer with just a standard three by three layer. So in order to make a turn, you can turn the top and bottom layers and wow, that does move good. Um, yeah, that turns great. To turn the other layers, you have to offset the middle layer uh, by 45 degrees. And now these sides will turn. So you basically can see how the Fisher key works, right? Because this is a normal three by three if you're holding it like this. And um, basically what they've done is to all of the edges, they've kind of cut them in half by 45 degrees and then taken those bits and then it kind of attached them to this side and extended out these edges um, to a point like this. Uh, so you can kind of see how that works here. And so then a cutter cube is basically the opposite. You have um, a Fisher middle layer and then three by three top and bottom layers. So uh, yeah, this turns really well. It's uh, you know probably just some kind of basic three by three design. It is, as you can see, but um, moves nicely. This is gonna solve just like a three by three. Um, and as a matter of fact, we actually won't get parity on this because the middle layer edges are um, have two colors on them and not just one. So it's actually gonna be marginally easier than a Fisher cube, but basically the same difficulty as a three by three. Uh, as the card said, this is probably a pretty good entryway for three by three shape mods because you get used to different shaped pieces, but the solving difficulty is actually basically the same as a normal three by three. I don't really think there's anything harder about this than a standard three by three, other than maybe just the fact that it's offset. And so you don't really kind of see how it all fits together until the end, kind of like a ghost cube, but way easier than a ghost cube. All right, so there's a scramble. Let's just go ahead and start with white and we'll get all of our um, uh, edges here. Um, I guess the only tricky thing about this is that to do these edges, you kind of have to more pay attention to the side colors rather than the middle colors um, and just match those up accordingly. But there we go, there's our cross. And then we'll go ahead and do uh, first two layers here. Which we'll just start with corners. like that, and then we'll get these middle pieces in. So these just go in like this, just like normal three by three edges. Just flipping this around, and then we'll insert this, and this. There we go. Now for the top, we'll just do a beginner's method uh, top layer or actually <laughs> just instinctively did not do that but uh, we have a u-perm so let's just go ahead and do that oh whoops did the wrong one there we go <laughs> okay there we go so 
pretty normal three by three solve. I take back what I said. It is a little bit harder than a normal three by three, especially if you've never done a Fisher cube before. So it can be a little bit confusing, especially on the top layer if you're doing OLL and PLL, like which pieces are the edges and which are the corners, because um, these kind of look like they would be corners, but they're actually edges. So yeah, definitely not a uh, super difficult puzzle, a pretty rudimentary three by three shape mod, but one that I didn't have in the collection before. So good one to add. All right, moving on to the next one, we have the Troy 3D Star. I'm excited about this one because I have the 3D printed version of this that I got before this was mass produced. So this is also known as the Dueling Tetra. This puzzle is actually a shape modification of a normal 3x3 puzzle. The modification gives the illusion of two master pyromorphix puzzles being squished into one another. It was first designed and 3D printed by Troy Robinson in early 2017. The solve of this puzzle is the same as a normal 3x3 other than some possible parity situations due to similar looking edge pieces. It's a bit challenging to wrap your head around at first, but once you have, it becomes a very enjoyable puzzle to solve. So yeah, like I said, I uh, got a um, prototype version of this, or I guess a 3D printed version of this from Troy or RC Pongo at Nationals a couple years ago. And I'm super happy uh, that it got mass produced because that was a super cool looking puzzle and I really wanted more people to be able to enjoy it. I already made a whole video on it and did a full solve in that video. But yeah, this is the mass produced version and it definitely looks nice. So for comparison, here is the 3D printed version that he made and uh, so graciously gave to me at nationals so and here is the mass produced version so a slightly different color scheme on his puzzle he had blue green white and red and on here we have blue green red and yellow instead of white so a little bit more like a normal pyraminx um, but yeah, I really liked the white on this puzzle. So this one um, turned really well already. It turned very well for a 3D printed puzzle. So let's just go ahead and see how this one moves. Yeah, so it moves much more like uh, a mass produced type 3x3 wood in terms of the quality of the movement. It actually feels a little bit rough, interestingly, uh, even though I'm sure it's the same base 3x3 as, as this puzzle, probably just because it's a little bit more, the pieces are more oddly shaped, um, kind of adds a little bit of roughness to it. I guess you can see, I guess it is actually a different design. This 3x3 edge looks quite a bit different. But um, yeah, this one's actually relatively tricky to solve because it's kind of confusing to look at the center pieces and see where the pieces go, especially when you have just an isolated face and you kind of have to solve it like this with all these colors on the same side. It can be tricky. I mean, it looks solved once it's all solved together, but when you're, when you're trying to solve it, it's hard to determine if a piece is actually in the right position or not. Uh, so the solve is, is actually relatively uh, challenging for a 3x3 shape mod. So let's just go ahead and scramble it up and we'll go through a solve. So yeah, basically this is designed to look like two Master Morphix puzzles kind of um, mushed together a bit. And uh, it's a really cool design. What th that does though is that it eliminates any shape shifting. So this puzzle does not shape shift at all. All right, we'll go ahead and call something like that scrambled. So it does it really doesn't matter what center you pick to start with because they're basically all very similar. But let's just go ahead and start with this one. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start with a uh, yellow and blue edge, which needs to go here. Yellow and blue here. There also is identical pieces on this puzzle, which can cause parodies, um, so it's tricky. So now we need to find yellow and blue next to each other on one of these centers to match it up with. It looks like we can match it up with this center here. So now we need uh, blue and green here, which is right here. So that's flipped. So we'll go ahead and flip it the other way and then make sure that this matches up somewhere. There we go. Okay. Interestingly, for some reason, one, I guess, flaw of this puzzle that I'm seeing is that the edges just aren't sitting flat with the centers. It feels like there's a kind of a bit of a gap there, um, which is weird. I mean, it doesn't really affect the quality of the puzzle that much, but it just kind of, it feels weird because these edges can kind of shift around a little bit in place which um, you know, was not really a problem on this original 3D printed version. But anyway, let's just go ahead and continue. Um, yep, we're on this side. So now we, uh, this piece is actually already in place, it's just flipped wrong. So go ahead and insert it from the other angle. And the center is already lined up. And then here we need red and blue, which is here. 
which we will... Um, actually, I don't want to rotate this corner, this, this corner here, so we'll go ahead and insert it from this angle here. And then we will rotate the center to make sure it matches. There we go. Okay, now our cross is done, um, except I've messed something up here. Uh, whoops, green and yellow, not green and blue. There we go. So this edge, which we can rotate in like that. All right, now our cross is done. Um, now we have to go ahead and get in these corners. And the tricky thing about this is that there's identical corners kind of all over the place, just stickered differently. So it may look like you have the right colored corner, but then it's actually not right. So for this, we need blue, green, and yellow, yellow, green, and blue, which is here. They're both in the top layer. One of these is correct, one of them is wrong. Let's see if this one fits into place. Oops. And it does, okay. So this one's in right, uh, I believe so. For this one, we need red, yellow, and green. So this one actually has the correct colors on it, but as you can see, it's not the correct corner because these two colors are flipped. So we need to find the other corner that has the same colors on it, uh, which is this corner here. And this one will be the correct corner. There you go, now that matches. For this one, um, it looks like Nope, that's not the right one. We need green, blue, and red. So green, blue, and red is here. Let's see if this is the correct one or not. It looks like it's not, because you can see the blue matches, but not these two colors. So it's gonna be this corner here that we need. So let's rotate this around. There we go, now that's correct. This one, uh, it looks like this actually is the correct corner, um, just rotated wrong. So let's go ahead and rotate this. There we go. Okay, so it looks like we've got our first layer done. Let's go ahead and move on to the second layer. So for the second layer, we need a red and yellow edge here. So red and yellow. That's gonna come in from this side. Here we need um, green and blue, green and blue. It's gonna come in from this side. Uh, we need yellow and red. Here's yellow and red here. And that's gonna come in also from this side. And this one's already done. Okay, we have our first two layers done. Now for the top layer, which is tricky. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just to assume to cycle the edges and see if I can get any that match up uh, here, even if they're flipped wrong. So there's one, So and there's two. So now these two need to flip uh, positions. So let's just go ahead and do a T-perm those easily so this is this is oriented right so is this so is this and so is this this center is not oriented correctly though and it looks like it needs to rotate 90 degrees which means we have to flip or uh, uh, do a swap with an identical piece so Here's an identical piece. These two are identical, so I think we need to swap these two pieces. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this the easiest way. Um, nope, can't do that. I think, um, let's just go ahead and actually flip this. So, do something like that. And now let's just go ahead and rotate this and rotate that back in, and now do a 180 degree uh, rotation on this center. There we go. Now we've swapped these two pieces. So let's see if we can do this top layer again. 
go ahead and try and get something to line up here. So this lines up even though this is flipped wrong. So let's get everything else to line up. There we go. So now it's just these two pieces that need to switch. So we have an L pattern, so we can do that. And then reposition our edges. And they should all be in place. Yes, there we go. So now we have our fully completed cross. Let's go ahead and do these corners, um, which, let's see here. This one's in the correct place. This one's not, which means neither of these two. So let's cycle these. Now let's check again. This one is in the correct place. So is this, so is this. Okay, now we can just rotate all of our corners. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. Let me line everything up. And there we go, we are done. So that is the solve of the Dueling Tetra or the Troy 3D Star as Calvin is calling it. Super awesome to see uh, Troy's signature right there on a mass produced puzzle. I'm really, really happy for him. So I'll definitely be sure to link my video to this puzzle and also his YouTube channel in the description if you guys wanna check out more of his puzzles. Anyways, that's about it for this month's Puzzle Crate. If you guys like to check out Puzzle Crate, the link will of course be in the description. It's a $30 a month subscription service and you get new puzzles sent to you every single month. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button, turn on notifications and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.